Today we're gonna to try and save this $11,000, 11,000 horsepower billet engine block. Now this is not the block I'm saving, but I wanted to show you how this motor plate is located on the engine itself. Now this motor plate sets in the chassis and these dowels on each side of it actually locate where this motor is actually gonna set in the chassis. Now here's the old girl, she's brand new. She's a virgin, she's never been ran. The only thing it's had done to it is these studs right here have been shoved in the end of it, but somebody tried putting the alignment dowels in it, but they did a really shitty job. Matter of fact, it's broke. It actually is broke clear down through the inside. It's out around, and now the dowel falls right through the damn hole. So I'm gonna have to weld this thing up. Now this is what the alignment dowel looks like. This thing's 620 on one end. It's almost half inch on the other end, but what I'm gonna have to do is take a reamer and I'm gonna have to custom grind it and custom fit it because what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna mount the motor plate on top of it. I'm gonna align the motor plate on it and then use the motor plate alignment dowel hole as my guide to pull a reamer from the bottom side up to the actual motor plate itself because the motor plate hole is smaller than the dowel hole, if that makes sense. So here you can see I've already taken and whittled out what was broken. And I always acetone all my parts, even including the rod that I'm gonna to use to weld it um, to get all the contaminants out of this. The last thing you want is a contaminated weld on something that's gonna be stressed like this. That's gonna be a press fit. You know, it's got about a half to one thou press fit. Now, if you've watched my videos and block repairs in the past, you know that I use a very specific uh, settings when welding uh, these billet blocks. Matter of fact, with all my aluminum, I run a really, really high frequency and a lot in the negative side. Now here I am peening the weld. Now being that this is going to be under pressure, the last thing I want to happen is this thing to crack right through the weld. So basically I'm reforging this weld around there and I'm also relieving the stress caused by cycling you know the heat on this thing so it honestly does work if you don't relieve the stress on a weld like this the first thing that's going to happen the moment that you try and you're going to make a press fit out of this thing it's going to just take that weld and it's just going to crack it right down the center i guarantee it by giving it this peening uh cycle it actually distributes that stress throughout that whole area of that ear. And, you know, I don't know the, the technical uh, term for what's going on with this other than it's basically you're reforging it, but man, it sure the hell works. Now you see me using a flat file on this. When people take down welds with say an air grinder or something like that, you tend to actually take the virgin material around the weld out also at the same time. By using a flat file, you will never do that as long as you keep it flat on the plate. Now I'm gonna clean this thing up and make it look all pretty because guess what? She is pretty. She's never been ran. She ought to look pretty. So that's what I'm gonna do. Now you can kind of see here how I'm gonna set this up. Now I have to put the other dowel in from the other side and I measured these things. And actually one of these dowels was about a thou too big. So the kid that was putting this thing in was having a hell of a time, number one, because the damn thing was too big. So I take it out of my little handy ice box here and I have this compound that I use. Uh, it's actually, it's a high pressure lube and it actually does help when pressing, you know, steel into aluminum or if you have any kind of tight fitting stuff. Matter of fact, we even use this on the top of our push rods when we first assemble the, uh, first assemble the motors before we start these things. But hey, I wanna show you this. This here is my old school uh, snap-on brass hammer. Now you can see right there, a chunk fell off of it, right? Well, I guess it's been a while since I've used this brass hammer. I thought I used it a lot, but the damn thing's falling apart. Anyway, wait till you see the next uh, operation with this thing. So I'll get it cleaned up here a little bit and show you how this thing sets in here. Now you look at these other studs and you're, oh, Winland, well, your, your motor plate's gonna align on those things anyway. Well, that's not the case. The bell housing actually aligns on these studs as well, which is even more important because it has the support 
for the input shaft, which is on the back of the crankshaft, which holds all your clutch discs in place, all six of them, and it's lining up the reverser to go to the rear end. So these alignment studs are very important. So I got the motor plate mounted on the block and that hole where that uh, alignment dowel is, is going to be my guide. Now I ordered a uh, reamer from MSC for the specific size of the dowel that I'm gonna be putting in this hole. But here's the problem. Number one, A, it's too long. Number two, that center part that I'm gonna use as a guide is only 495 hole, where this thing is 565 thousandths in diameter. Here's gonna, a little explanation of how this is gonna work. So I'm gonna pull up on this drill press basically and pull that reamer from the bottom side up to take that hole out. Now keep in mind that motor plate hole is smaller in diameter than the hole for the dowel itself. So I'm gonna have to do some whittling on this reamer. We're gonna start off by taking the majority of the area that I need to whittle down on this reamer with the lathe. Now I'm putting the ER32 uh, a chuck holder. Basically, this is a holder that I can put in my chuck that accepts uh, ER32. And the reason why I'm using that is, is because it has more flutes inside of it that will hold a reamer better. Now, if I just put that reamer on a three jaw chuck, it's just going to actually, it's going to be really hard on the reamer itself. And not only that, but it won't hold it straight this will hold it straight. It's kind of like uh, a C5 style collet system, but this is just real simple uh, ER32 deal. Anyway, so I'm gonna support it in the back. Uh, when reamers are made, they are ground and they already have um, uh, supporting uh, countersinks in them so that you can align these things. Now, once I get this thing tightened up, I wanna make sure that this uh, reamer is mounted in here straight. And so I'm going to run back and forth and I'm going to adjust this tailstock on here until my cutter is running 100% true with this reamer. And also, you know a damn reamer, it's a tool. The damn thing's hard as hell. So it's going to take up just a little bit to get some of this knocked off here. Now when cutting really hard materials, just uh, always remind yourself of the Cars movie when Ramon comes out of the paint shop and he's going onto the new road that uh, McQueen just made and he says, oh, check him out. He's running low and slow. <clears throat> yep, that's what you need to do when cutting this hard material like this. And I mean, it is hard, but I got a plan for it as well. So I'm gonna take this thing out of the lathe and I'm gonna take it over to my, my tool grinder. Yep, that's right, a tool grinder. Now this thing usually sets off to the side and doesn't do a whole lot. And it's really not made for doing OD grinding. Well, it actually, I guess it is somewhat. Um, I've got my stop set on this thing, so I'm not gonna grind the flutes off this thing, but um, I gotta manually turn this thing. Now, this is actually made for sharpening like um, big shell cutters for like an end mill, also end mills and doing the flutes and that kind of thing. And you can see here, I just got to manually spin this thing, but this way I can get the last 10 thousandths off and it's going to be perfectly centered um, to the the actual flutes on the reamer. Now, say if it's, isn't, say if it's off a thou and a half, then this reamer that's supposed to be 620, if it's a thou and a half out on the chuck, then it ends up being 622 not 620 because it's not running true and it's actually making a hole that's bigger than what the reamer is it came out pretty nice so now i'm going to give this thing a haircut so i just mount it back up into the old lathe and i use my chop off tool how's that easy peasy now you can kind of get the idea of what's happening here except this is upside down so it's using the hole in the motor plate as the guide and now I'm gonna line all this stuff back up and I'm gonna pull this reamer back up through the welded area where that alignment hole is and I'm gonna ream that hole from the back side. I'm gonna take my time. You only get to do this once. Well, you could actually do it twice. You could screw it up and weld it back all back up again and tear this all back apart and do it again. You could do it twice, but I wanna do it one time because 
that's how I roll. So I, I haven't put my other C and C back together yet. It got dumped on its side when we were trying to move it from one shop to another. Buddy of mine's fixed the enclosure on it and stuff. So what I'm using here is, this is actually a Winona valve seat machine. A friend of mine bought this from me, but he hadn't picked it up. So it's free game. It's on, I gotta use it. So here's the dowel. We're getting ready to put this in. I got the high pressure syrup on this thing. She's cold as hell. And we're gonna beat this thing in. Now, I want you guys to pay specific attention to this hammer, because I'm gonna slow it down at the end. This damn thing, the handle started spinning even on it. You can see me misfire here in just a second. In my upcoming video on another block repair, wait till you see the stupid hammer, not this one, another one that comes flying apart. But here, I had to slow this thing down so you guys can see how much damage this thing has. Now, check this out. Look, the whole handle's missing. Maybe I'm gaining strength as I get older. Well, I'll wipe this thing down and I'm gonna look and I really wanna see if this thing broke the weld or not, but guess what? No, it didn't. So this old girl is ready to put a motor plate on. Now, this is kind of a scary moment because you got the hole drilled. You got all the studs in it. Let's see if this old thing will accept a motor plate. I even left the shop music going for you guys. And voila, pretty damn nice. Well, it's always exciting to do something like that. It took quite a few hours to do it, but you know, it's better than that than junk in a $11,000 block. So, We'll pull this old girl off here, me and my Harbor Freight engine hoist. And I'm gonna show you the upcoming block repair. Top fuel motors are pissed off. And this next block, it happened in Vegas for a team and it started eating up the block. But I'm gonna show you how to repair this block with nothing but hand tools. You heard me, we're not gonna deck the whole thing, do all that crap. We're gonna repair it 100% with nothing but hand tools and a welder. For those of you that stayed till the end, thank you very much. Please hit the like and the follow button. If you have any comments and stuff, just let me know. I'm usually pretty good about answering them. Thanks again.